and I will always love you. It's happened to all of us. You're singing through a phrase and suddenly, without warning, your voice runs out of air. Your lack of breath management not only interrupts the phrase being sung, but it also severely impacts on your singing performance, affecting pitch, range, and style. When you watch this video in its entirety, you'll not only have a better understanding of how your body breathes for better singing, you'll also have the practical skills to develop your breath management, which in turn will improve your singing in countless ways. If you want to stop running out of air when you sing, then keep watching. Sound check. Check one, check two. G'day there, welcome back to Voice Essentials, the YouTube channel where everybody sings. My name is Dr. Dan and I'm a contemporary singing voice specialist. It's my job to help you get the absolute most out of your singing voice. So, if singing is your thing, then hit that subscribe button and ring the bell icon for regular new video notifications. Today, we are talking about breath management. Actually, we're gonna be doing far more than talking about it because later in the video, I'm gonna teach you not one, not two, or three, but four breath management exercises that I use every day here in my studio with my private singing students. These exercises work and I know they will work for you. So be sure to stick around until the end of the video because you'll need to learn all four activities to get the collective benefit of the full set. When I show you the four exercises, I'll be setting you a 28 day challenge, which will require you to keep a record of your development over time. To help with this, I've designed a free worksheet for you to download so that you can track your progress. So I hope you'll take a brief moment to pause the video and quickly grab the printable worksheet now because you're going to need it in a few moments. But before we get into the practical stuff, I quickly want to cover off on some of the critical anatomical knowledge that every singer should know about their bodies, and how the body breathes for singing. Now, I know some of you would prefer to jump straight into the practical exercises, and you can do that by jumping forward to the timestamp on the screen. But if you are serious about seeing real results, then I urge you to stay with me as we briefly learn about your physical instrument. The more you know, the better you'll perform. So typically, when we talk about breath management, we break the breath cycle into two phases, inhalation, and exhalation. The inhalation phase is activated by the diaphragm as it contracts in a downward motion. When we sing, we aim for the inhalation phase to be unrestricted by tension in the throat, shoulders, and abdomen. As we'll see in the activity soon, learning to release the abdominal wall, anatomically known as the rectus abdominis, you may also know it as a six pack or the six pack you wish you had. Learning to release the abdominal wall requires practice for many of us because our social sensibilities have caused many of us to walk around with our tummies held in tight. And when the diaphragm contracts downwards, the atmospheric pressure in the lungs decreases, causing air to rush in and fill the hundreds of millions of tiny sacs called alveoli that collectively form the lungs. And this is where it can get all very complicated and confusing. So I'll do my best to keep it simple and applicable to singing. As the inhalation phase comes to its climax, the atmospheric pressure typically reaches an apex point that is greater than the atmospheric pressure in the surrounding external environment. The internal pressure of the lungs is increased further for the singer when they commence phonation by bringing the vocal folds together and we need this flow of pressure to activate the oscillation of the vocal folds to form sound and we then need to maintain the well-managed flow of air through the larynx to facilitate consistent sound in keeping with the phrase being sung, including its length, melodic range, and dynamic, just to mention a few. Now, you may have heard other singing teachers here on YouTube, for example, suggest that you don't need to worry about learning to breathe for singing because your body will do it all naturally. For you. I wish this were the case, I really do, but in my 20 plus years of teaching singers, I have not met a single singer who hasn't benefited from learning better breath management skills because our bodies rarely do things most efficiently 
naturally. Learning to manage the breath and coordinate the sometimes very subtle adjustments of the larynx requires intentional practice with specially designed activities, four of which we'll be doing together in a moment. But a couple of important quick points before we start breathing together. Number one, as we continue, it is essential to understand that the latest research has revealed that singers tend to have a distinct individual respiratory pattern. Generally speaking, endomorph body types tend to be abdominally based in their patterns, and ectomorph body types tend to be rib cage based. There is a third body type, mesomorph, which sits somewhere between endomorph and ectomorph, and in my observation, seems to experience the respiratory pattern as a combination of abs and ribs. But this too seems to alter slightly from singer to singer, which brings me to a second point before we dive into the exercises. There are a number of breathing methodologies for singers available today. But because and no singer breathes the same, I find that employing a combination of strategies seems to facilitate the best outcomes for my students. And funnily enough, the two methods that I apply actually approach breath management almost from an opposite ends of the pedagogical divide. But this is why I think a poggio and accent method work so well together. Both have valuable insights that when practiced together in a carefully considered way, combine to form a broad yet holistic approach that assists singers from across the body type spectrum to improve their breath management. So now that we have a better understanding of how our bodies breathe for singing, let's dive into the four breath management exercises that I know you are going to enjoy and are going to help your vocal performance in ways you can't even imagine. Again, be sure to download the free worksheet I've designed for you because you are going to need it for recording your progress both now and over the next 28 days. That is, of course, if you're up for the challenge. Now, if you've watched some of my other videos about breath management before, you'll possibly be familiar with the first three exercises, with the fourth being completely new. Now, regardless, I wanna challenge you to revisit all four exercises with me now so that we might practice them as a set. The first activity we'll be doing is an apoggio exercise that manages the breath stream as three distinct phases, inhale, suspend, exhale. Now, some would argue that the middle section, the phase during which we suspend the movement of the diaphragm with the activation of our abdominals and obliques is redundant because singers don't generally suspend the breath stream. And while this is true, I think the understated value of this activity is the opportunity that it provides a singer to be mindful of their body system, mapping the movement of the muscles as well as any tensions that arise. It's an exercise in tension management as much as it is in breath management. So let's do the exercise together now. A few instructions to start. When breathing in through the mouth, be sure to not overfill. We don't want to develop tension around the shoulders and neck at the apex point of the inhalation. And as you suspend, take a moment to run a body scan, checking for any points of stress or unnecessary muscle activation, being sure to release tensions when you find them. And then as you exhale, do so using an SH. Shh, aiming to release your air evenly over the count. We're about to do three cycles, starting with an eight second count, followed by 10 seconds, and then 12. Let me show you. Let's commence. Inhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Suspend, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 10 count. Inhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Suspend, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Twelve count. Inhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Suspend. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Exhale. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now, the exercise track that we're using to do the activity is taken from my exercise collection, Voice Essentials 1. If you download the MP3, you'll notice that the activity cycles all the way through to 20. 20 inhale, 20 suspend, 20 exhale. It's important to understand that some of you may struggle with eight seconds to start, and that's okay. It doesn't matter what you can do now. What matters is how your voice will benefit from the regular practice of this activity over time. So let's say you can comfortably do 10 seconds today. For the next seven days, I want you to practice the exercise through to the end of the 12 count. Then during eight through 14, practice to the 14 count. And days 15 through to 21, practice to the 16 count. Essentially, what we're seeking to do here is move the goalposts every week, challenging ourselves to develop beyond what feels comfortable. Typically, I aim to see my private singing students achieve a level where they can regularly and with relative ease do the exercise track through to 16. And this ties in nicely to the next activity, the extended exhale. This too is an apoggio exercise and is more closely related to a sung phrase in so much as it has a relatively quick inhale of four seconds followed by an extended exhale, again using the SH sound. Shh, let me show you. Let's commence. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, and so on. 30. Just like the exhale of the previous exercise, we are aiming for an even consistent flow of air. Now, most people get somewhere between 10 to 20 seconds on their first go, but remember, consistency is the aim. So aim for quality, not quantity. Now that being said, we want to exercise to a point where you can exhale an even, consistent shh for 45 seconds. So if your first count is 15 seconds, for the first seven days of the 28 day challenge, aim to make that 20 seconds. And during week two, try to achieve 25 seconds and then seek to add 20 seconds to your initial recorded count by the end of the 28 day challenge. Essentially, we're adding five second counts to every week. The extended exhale requires your abdominals and obliques to manage the slow elastic recoil of the diaphragm smoothly. Our third activity, taken from my exercise collection, Voice Essentials 2, employs the accent method ideal of a flexible and responsive abdominal wall. Using sounds called sibilant fricatives, we'll be activating abdominal movements that are designed to flex the abdominal wall, which in turn will articulate the breath stream. Again, let me show you how it goes. Make no mistake, while this exercise is not designed to give you that much desired six pack, 
it is a serious workout for the abs. And on this note, I want you to continually monitor any potential gathering of tension across your shoulders and around your neck. You're aiming to have all the work done by the quick action of the abdominal muscles. So there should be no sense of stress in your larynx or through your jaw either. Now, we're not keeping any records as a part of the 28 day challenge for this exercise. Nonetheless, I want you to practice it because it will factor into the improvement of your singing in surprising ways. So too will the fourth exercise, which combines all of the components from the previous three activities. I think you're going to really enjoy this one. Here's an example. And again. Let's do one more. And so on. This exercise, sibilant fricatives with connected vowels, is the first activity in the Voice Essentials 3 exercise collection. So it will be new to many of you. It combines the values of the sibilant fricative exercise from Voice Essentials 2 and adds the additional component of phonating with different vowels, thus challenging the voice to remain free from tension all while producing fully formed vowels with good tone. The key to this fourth exercise is to move the air in a free manner all while you shape and place sound into the breath stream. This last activity is an advanced exercise, so if you're struggling with it, don't sweat it. Focus on the first three activities and revisit the fourth exercise when you feel like you're starting to see improvements in the first three. And you'll know when you're advancing in the first two because you'll be tracking your progress over the next 28 days. I'm going to be excited to hear about your development, so make sure you leave any comments below stating your first recorded numbers and then follow it up in 28 days with your final numbers. If you're diligent with daily practice for the next month, I know you will see improvements, not only in your breath management, but in your singing and vocal performance. Another area of your singing and that will benefit from better breath management is navigating your vocal range and a thing we singing teachers call voice registration. If you'd like to learn more about voice registration, then click on this video and I'll see you in a moment with more practical singing instruction. See you again soon. I'm Dr. Dan, sing well.